we talk about uh, specifically uh, IPAC or APAC, however you're supposed to say that IPAC, um, as a as a lobby. But where most of the money goes is to supporting candidates. Lobbying is different from campaign contributions. The campaign contributions is what I was talking about, sort of in that video where I was saying this is a campaign industrial complex where they're just uh, funneling money into these various non-productive uh, industries like media, advertising, analytics, polling, what what have you. And, you know, in America, you have in any given like five year period, you're going to have at least one presidential election, at least two congressional elections, potentially a senatorial election, uh, and then any number of local, you know, state, municipal or whatever elections, city elections and so on. There's always an election somewhere that needs uh, or that can provide a vehicle for funneling money into those sectors, into those industries. The people's, uh, you know, individuals, political donations, because they're uh, mobilized and they're motivated by some cause, by some political cause, some social cause, some ideological cause, uh, and the politician uh, knows to manipulate that cause or say that they are supportive of this cause or against this cause, uh, that then uh, that will motivate people to give them campaign donations. And then those campaign donations are just funneled through the candidate into those different sectors. So that's that's one aspect of it. And that's what IPAC does mostly. When, when we see those numbers of what they spend, most of that has to do with them uh, using political candidates to funnel money into those industries. Uh, but when you're talking about lobbying, they don't actually spend that much money on lobbying. And in fact, the, the amount of money they spend on lobbying absolutely pales in comparison to other lobbies that, that where that's their primary, uh, that's primarily what they spend their money on lobbying as opposed to campaign contributions. For example, a lot of people don't aren't aware of this. Uh, Saudi Arabia. The government of Saudi Arabia spent $100 million in lobbying as opposed to a million and a half by IPAC. Saudi Arabia spent a hundred million. That's not even including Qatar or, or, or UAE or what have you. IPAC isn't even in the top 20 lobbies in Washington. I think it's somewhere around 206 or something in terms of what they spend in lobbying. Boeing is in the top 10. You know, Lockheed Martin is in the top 10. I think Amazon is in the top 10. In fact, the, the biggest lobby in Washington, the, the biggest in terms of spending, the biggest lobby in Washington is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The top 10 lobbies that spend the most money on lobbying, they're all business related. It's all business. Big Pharma, you know, Pfizer is there. Uh, insurance, medical insurance, life insurance, and so on. Real estate sector is there. Tech sector is there, like Alphabet, you know, Google, uh, Comcast, AT&T, you know, the, the telecoms. Those are the, those are the actually the actual biggest lobbyists in Washington, and and no one talks about that. Whenever they point you in a direction, it's because they're trying to point you away from something. It's never because they want to draw your attention to what a real the real issue is or what the real problem is. It's always to divert your attention. If they ever point something out, I mean, how many times have you heard people talk about what Google spends, what Alphabet spends in lobbying, or what uh, AT and T or Pfizer what they spend in lobbying? How often is that discussed? But you want to pretend that IPAC has all of this control. In fact, the, the, the only, I, I think the only, what you could call ideological lobby, uh, that's in the top 20 of the highest, uh, uh, spending lobbies in Washington is the Open Society Foundation of George Soros, which is not a Zionist organization. It funds pro-Palestinian NGOs. It, 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 it supports NGOs like Beth Salem and, and others in Israel that are critical of the Israeli government and, and advocate for human rights for Palestinians. Uh, so, as I said, you just have to bear in mind that whenever they, they highlight something, whenever they put a spotlight on something, it's because they want to keep everything else in the dark. They want to they cover up everything else. That's the only, the only time they'll ever shine a light on something is when they want to divert your attention from what's really going on in the shadows. As I said, the, the largest actual uh, political lobby uh, in the United States is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so obviously all they do uh, and the, the, the huge amount of money that they spend is specifically and exclusively for the purpose of serving the interests of business uh, and increasing the rights of business and decreasing the rights of workers, decreasing the rights of consumers, decreasing the rights of what would, what would uh, in their own corporate propaganda be called stakeholders, meaning the communities in which they operate and the country. Uh, 
uh, it's given them increasing power. And over the over the past, well, basically my, throughout my lifetime, but especially over the last 30 years or so, uh, especially with the uh, Citizens United uh, legislation, they gave corporations the rights of, of actual citizens, of individual citizens. You've seen the rise of corporate power. You've seen the untethering of corporate power from national interests. So now corporations and the uh, owners and controllers of global financialized capital are not nationalistic anymore. They don't have nationalistic interests. If you are someone's enemy, then the best thing, your best strategy is to tell them uh, who their enemy is. And it's not you. It's always going to be somebody else. If you can always have the people fighting each other uh, over this, that, and the other thing, uh, especially if it's ideological uh, or emotional, then they're not going to fight you. So you you get them out of your hair. They're not going to be a problem for you. As you see, who who talks about what we're talking about now with regards to, uh, for example, who, who actually even knew that the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is actually the largest lobbyist in Washington? As I said, they put a spotlight on, on one particular group or one particular issue uh, so that you won't see any everything else that's not in the spotlight. It's, it's, just a, it's just a deflection. It's just a, a way of diverting your attention from uh, what's actually happening and who's actually in charge and who's actually running things. Uh, it's, it's absolutely in their interest to divert your attention. Uh, the OCGFC is absolutely in their interest to divert people's attention and get them busy and think that, that uh, every battle between uh, this uh, sort of sectarian uh, group and that sectarian group is a, a zero-sum existential uh, conflict that they must win, otherwise it's the end of the world. Uh, that that just keeps you completely uh, neutralized. Uh, that that's, in my opinion, that's the point of of all of these divisions. It's, just, it's to keep you neutralized and diverted, so that you will never actually pay attention to what's actually happening. Because in fact, most people have uh, common interests, regardless of what their their little uh, personal uh, sort of niche interests might be. Their their real interests are common interests. So for most people in America. Uh, most people in America are struggling financially. Most people in America are in debt. Uh, most people in America are being chased uh, by debt collectors, like the, like like bloodhounds. It's it's a it's a very difficult situation for most people. People can't afford uh, health care. They can't afford to. Uh, they have to decide whether they're going to buy uh, groceries or go to the doctor. Uh, on and on and on. I mean, the the actual common interests of people uh, are far more. And the interests or, or, or the issues that divide them, uh, and it takes a great deal of uh, propaganda. It takes a great deal of indoctrination. It takes a great deal of uh, media campaigns and spin uh, to divert you from the very obvious fact that you're all in a common struggle against really uh, a common foe, a common oppressor. Uh, whether you're white, black, brown, what have you, uh, financially. Uh, people in the United States across all, all sectors are struggling in one way or another, uh, and they don't want you to pay attention to that fact. Uh, and they don't want you to know, for example, that the biggest lobbyist actually is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, meaning conglomeration of business. Like I said, every uh, in the top 20 lobbyists, they're all industrial sectors uh, that actually have the most influence uh, in, in uh, lobbying for legislation in Congress. It, it has nothing to do with uh, even something like LGBT or feminism or any of these other things. You, and, and that, that lets you know that then you have to look at whatever these ideological issues are that people get motivated about or they get mobilized about. Then you have to ask, uh, well, why is that? Why is that issue being highlighted? I mean, for example, with the whole LGBT agenda is being driven by big pharma. I've been saying that for years and big pharma has far more influence over, over Congress and over legislation than anything else. Than any than any so-called uh, civil liberties or uh, LGBT agenda uh, group or lobby or what what have you. So you have to look at at the the, the ones who actually have influence uh, over the Congress over legislation, and then you can uh, uh, surmise you can deduce from that which ideological agendas serve their interests, and then you'll know what's really behind those ideological agendas being pushed. Uh, you were talking about policies that benefit interests, uh, uh, business interests. Yeah. I mean, the most obvious one is is the the uh, America's uh, position and policy towards Israel. That's the most obvious one because 
You see, you see the, the tens of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions over the years, uh, going to Israel. And that's the way it's reported. But that money's not going to Israel. At least 70 to 80 percent of that money is going directly to Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, uh, General Dynamics, and so on. That's just, that's just literally funneling, uh, public money into the private sector. It's literally just funneling money into the, into the weapon sector. That, that's, I mean, that's the most obvious example. It's, it's absolutely blatant. That that's, that's all that is. Israel is just a, uh, it serves the function of providing a justification for putting all of this uh, huge amount of money, uh, into a sector that is producing disposable materials. So, I mean, this, this is the most obvious issue. And this is why, uh, the, the, the obsession with IPAC is so misleading because you, ne you never talk about Boeing or Raytheon or, or Lockheed and th they're in the top 10, uh, most powerful and, and highest spending lobbies. Uh, in Washington, but no one talks about them. No one talks about the fact that this whole policy is for their interests. They're they're being funded based on the uh, the policy towards Israel. These these companies uh, are staying afloat. They wouldn't even be able to stay afloat otherwise. You know, so so th this is the the most obvious example. And then you talked about COVID for 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 instance, Pfizer uh, is also one of the top ten lobbyists, the top ten most influential lobbyists and, and highest spending. Lobbyists in Washington, Pfizer, uh, and then the the entire big pharma sector, with health insurance and so on. Uh, so I mean, it's transparent. It, rather than looking for uh, which policy is in the interest of business, you can just look at any policy and then figure out how it's being ser how it serves business interests. That's the way that you should do it. Not say, well, what's an example of a policy? You can't find a policy that isn't in the interest of business. You can't find one. The 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 laws are literally being written. By corporate lawyers, and I and I'm not. That's not hyperbole. They're literally being written by corporate lawyers. Sometimes it passes into the congressional record, uh, even with the syntax mistakes and the typing errors uh, from from the corporate lawyer's office. It, they literally don't even edit it. They just copy and paste and and put it down, and put it into law. And it was it, it, the congressman had nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's not a thing where let me see if I can identify any policy that is in the service of business. They're all in the service of business. You just have to look at the policy and identify why, and then look at, if you if you have the time and the and, and go to the trouble uh, to do the research, look at the lobbies that were actually involved in that. Look at the, look at the, look at the, the lobbies that were involved in uh, lobbying that uh, uh, congressional committee, for example. Look at the members of that committee, the congressional members of that, this or that committee, and then look who their funders were, uh, and then uh, deduce uh, from that how this policy or that policy is in the interest of the people who bought those politicians.